The following presentation by the Chestnut Hill Conservancy is part of our History at Home collection of activities from our archives. Community stories from our past in the comfort of your home. History at Home is made possible by our generous members and supporters. Thank you. This illustrated lecture entitled Forging a Community Fabric, the Houston Woodward Developments, was originally created as a captioned slideshow for the October 2019 Night of Lights exhibition along Germantown Avenue in Chestnut Hill. This lecture was developed by David Contasta and produced by Leah Silverstein and Molly Murphy with narration by Lori Salganikoff. Henry Howard Houston, born in 1820 and seen here as a young man, would become a multifaceted entrepreneur whose wealth would finance his extended family's real estate developments and community planning in Chestnut Hill and Mount Airy. At the time of this photograph taken late in life, Houston had created a development on the west side of Chestnut Hill that he called Wissahickon Heights. The development included about 100 rental houses along with several institutions. These structures were virtually all built of the local stone known as Wissahickon Schist. Pictured here is Drumwar, the home of Henry Howard Houston, located on the far west side of Chestnut Hill, designed by the Hewitt brothers and completed in 1886. Drumwar translates as Great Craig and probably reflects the Scottish ancestry of the Houstons, as well as the then current Gothic revival style. The front of Drumwar is seen here in this contemporary view. Especially impressive is the massive Port Cochere, photo by Carol Franklin. Shown here are the formal gardens commissioned in the early 1920s by Samuel Houston, the son of Henry Howard Houston, who had inherited the property. The gardens were designed by Robert Rhodes McGoodwin, an accomplished Philadelphia architect who did a great deal of work in Chestnut Hill and vicinity. One can appreciate this section of the lush rear gardens at Drumwar in a contemporary photograph by Carol Franklin. Henry Howard Houston used his connections with the Pennsylvania Railroad, of which he'd been general freight agent and later a member of the board of directors, to build a commuter line completed in 1884 into his Wissahickon Heights development. This circa 1900 photograph shows what was then called the Wissahickon Heights Station now St. Martin's. Houston built the Wissahickon Inn, which opened in 1884 and is shown here in a romantic sketch of the facility. The inn was designed by the Hewitt brothers who received virtually all of the other Houston commissions. The inn is now part of Springside Chestnut Hill Academy. This picture postcard of the Wissahickon Inn, circa 1890, shows the inn from the West Willow Grove Avenue side. The original buildings and grounds of the Philadelphia Cricket Club appear in this 1895 photograph. The club, located along West Willow Grove Avenue, was another Houston project for Wissahickon Heights. It was designed by the Hewitt brothers in a Queen Anne style and completed in 1884. Cricket was then very popular in Philadelphia, with trains bringing hundreds of spectators up from the city to see the matches. After the original cricket club buildings were destroyed in a fire in 1908, they were replaced in 1910 by colonial revival structures that were designed by George T. Pearson. The colonial revival style can be interpreted as an architectural rebuttal to what was considered to be the chaos and ugliness of urban industrial America. Photo circa 1990. This aerial view from 1922 reveals the Cricket Club complex as it looked in an era after cricket had greatly declined in popularity, hence the lawn, tennis courts, and baseball diamond. In the upper left is St. Martin in the Fields Church. Across the street is what was then known as St. Martin's Green and is now part of the Springside Chestnut Hill Academy athletic fields. The Gothic Revival style St. Martin in the Fields Episcopal Church was another feature that Houston contributed to his Wissahickon Heights development. The church was meant to appeal to the sorts of Anglophile families that Houston wished to attract to the neighborhood. 
The church was designed by the Hewitt brothers and completed in 1889. This photo is from circa 1990. Numbers 301 and 305 West Highland Avenue, shown here, were built by Houston in 1891 from designs by the Hewitt brothers. They are among the best examples of domestic Queen Anne architecture anywhere in the country. These adjoining residences at 7903 St. Martin's Lane and 329 West Springfield Avenue were built by Houston, designed by the Hewitt brothers, and completed in 1890. Featuring gambrel roofs, they can be described as early Colonial Revival models. 323 and 325 West Springfield Avenue, designed by Rankin and Kellogg, were built in 1896 by the Henry Howard Houston Estate a year after Houston's death. The Houston Estate continued to develop Houston properties, especially in Upper Roxboro, well into the 20th century. In 1894, Houston's daughter Gertrude married Dr. George Woodward. The Woodwards continued to develop residential real estate, eventually building about 180 rental properties. They changed the name of their west side developments from Wissahickon Heights to St. Martin's in reference to the church. This is a circa 1914 photo of the Woodward family at Chrisheim, their home on the west side of Chestnut Hill. George and Gertrude Woodward at center pose with family members in the library at Chrisheim in 1944. The occasion was their 50th wedding anniversary. This 1912 photo is of the garden side of the Woodward's Chrisheim. The massive house was designed by Peabody and Stearns and completed in 1911. It was constructed of Wissahickon schist as were all but a few of the Woodward commissions. This contemporary view of the rear garden side of Chrisheim shows a section of the house amidst a century-old landscape. Photo by Carol Franklin. This shows the formal garden at Chrisheim as it appeared in 1912, which was designed by the famous Olmsted brothers. Gertrude's father gave her the property as a wedding gift in 1894, but instead of building immediately, the Woodward spent nearly two decades on landscaping and then set the house into maturing grounds. One of the earliest of the Woodward commissions was a set of twin houses on the unit block of Benazette Street, designed by H. Lewis During and completed in 1909. They were similar in massing, but varied in facade treatments with combinations of brick, stucco, and stone. These rented originally to young couples who had so many babies that residents nicknamed the street Bassinet Street. Contemporary photo by Carol Franklin. Between Benazette Street and the unit block of East Springfield Avenue, the Woodwards built a group of what they called quadruple houses, also designed by During and completed in 1910. By arranging what were essentially sets of twin houses back to back, they saved money by not having to construct additional outside walls. Photo, circa 1990. The Woodwards built another group of quadruple houses between the 200 blocks of West Nippon Street and West Mount Airy Avenue in Mount Airy, circa 1912, likewise designed by During. Contemporary photo by Carol Franklin. The Woodward Half Moon Group, located at 7919 to 7925 Lincoln Drive, was typical of their late commissions, which cited houses around shared open space. The Half Moon Group was designed by During and built in 1917. They were part of the Woodward's larger Cotswold village, inspired by their visit to England's Cotswold Hills in 1914. This photograph was taken circa 1990. A picturesque view of the alley behind the Half Moon Group exemplifies the charm and fine design of the later Woodward Commissions. Like the Colonial Revival, this late English medieval style, as represented in the Half Moon Group, can be seen as a rebuke to the perceived ugliness of urban industrial society. Contemporary photo by Carol Franklin. This set of Woodward Cotswold houses at 8008 to 8012 Krefeld Street were designed by Edmund Gilchrist and completed in 1921. The kitchens in these houses were placed on the noisier street side with other interior spaces facing generous gardens in the rear. Photo 1968. 
These Woodward houses at 8007 to 8013 Creffeld Street, finished in stucco, have been described as arts and crafts in style and were completed in 1913. They were designed by Robert McGoodwin, who was fast becoming the Woodward's favorite architect. Photo 1968. This large Cotswold style house at 260 West Hartwell Lane faces Pastorius Park, also a Woodward project. The house was designed by During and completed in 1917. This photograph was taken circa 1990. The houses at 103 to 113 West Willow Grove Avenue are collectively known as the Woodward's Linden Court, designed by Edmund Gilchrist and built in 1916. Linden Court was built in the Colonial Revival style and is one of the few Woodward commissions in red brick. For many years, Dr. Woodward had the residents assemble in the court near Christmas each year and sing carols, which he directed. Photograph circa 1990. The Woodward's Roanoke Court at 8014 to 8028 Roanoke Street, rendered in the Cotswold style, was designed by During and built in 1932. This court, like the others that the Woodward's commissioned, included shared open space in the center. Contemporary photo by Carol Franklin. Located at 7821 to 7835 Winston Road is the Woodward's Winston Court, designed by During and completed in 1925 in the Cotswold style. The Woodwards went to France in 1921 to see the site where their son Houston, an aviator in World War I, had been shot down and killed. Returning home, they commissioned their architects to create a French village in Mount Airy, built between 1924 and 1929. Pictured here are the gatehouses at the entrance to the French village at the corner of Allens Lane and Cresham Valley Road. Photograph 1929. Here are the gatehouses at the entrance to the French village as they appeared circa 1990. One section of houses in the French village was situated along what was called Gate Lane. Shown here circa 1990 is the entrance to Gate Lane. Number 403 is one of the residences on Gate Lane, designed by Robert Rhodes McGoodwin. The larger houses in the French village are situated along Elbow Lane, also designed by McGoodwin. These properties, unlike the houses on Gate Lane, were built by various owners on land purchased from the Woodwards, with the stipulation that they be built in the French style. This contemporary photo by Carol Franklin is at the rear of 415 Gate Lane in the French village. It is a good example of the borrowed landscape a design element in which landscapes shared by several properties blend together to create a sense of organic wholeness and openness, one of the trademarks of the best Woodward developments. 